Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to become sub 5 on 7x7, so let's do it. So the first thing that you need to know, so these are just requirements, you need to know the reduction method and you can use Yao, but this tutorial will be for reduction. So some tips might not apply as well. The next thing that is required is for you to be at least sub 16. You can get away with being a little slower on three by three, but I just recommend being sub 16 because then your look ahead will be at a point where it'll be pretty easy to achieve sub five on seven by seven. So with that out of the way, my first tip would be to learn five by five centers. So as an example of what I mean, more specifically, I would say get good at last two centers on five by five. So there are algorithms to learn all of these cases. So basically what you do for five by five is you just solve a two by three. And then after that, there's just like an algorithm set essentially to solve the rest of it. I recommend learning this because a lot of these cases will show up on seven by seven. They will show up on the middle nine pieces and that's why you need to know how to do five by five centers. And similar to five by five, the way that you solve it on a seven by seven is actually exactly the same. So as an example, I'm going to give it not last two centers. So for example, if you see this lightning kind of thing, this can be picked up from five by five. And basically the way that you can solve this into a two by three is you take two pieces like this, move them down, you two come back up. And then you could solve like the two by one here and the two by one here, and you can make a uh, nice five by two. And then one more thing is the T case. I mean, these are obviously not all of them, but um, the T case uh, is very helpful for seven by seven to know that if you do this and then come back down, it'll make you two bars. So just stuff like this from five by five is very helpful to learn. So I recommend learning some five by five before you jump right into seven by seven. I mean, you could just learn it straight on the seven by seven, but I feel like it's easier just to do on five by five and get good at five by five, which is what I did first. And then after I got good at five by five, I started seven by seven and I was able to reach sub five just within a few days. So my next tip is after pairing your first edge, make sure you move it into a layer and then try and fill that layer. So if I'm going to replace the uh, edge with this one so I can attach it to this, I'll do it like this and then I'll build my next edge, which will be next red and white. And then the next two are over here and I'm going to rotate back up. And I'm going to look for an edge. So these two go with this and I'll replace it. And then I'm going to keep going until this whole layer is filled up, which is, it almost is. And then finally, I'm just going to look for the last edge, which will be these two going with this and then pair them up and just keep uh, pairing up edges. So this is very, very helpful because if you fill up a full layer, then you don't have to look there again and you can just stay on top like this and then continue pairing edges. Sometimes it won't always be like this. So you will have to put one edge here because your edges won't always be on top here. If that's the case, just try and fill one layer first. You want to think about it like that. If it doesn't get filled first, it's fine. If you have like one edge up here and then you can finally put this last edge down here and then you'll have like one extra edge done here and then four here and you won't have to look there again. But sometimes you can get really unlucky and you'll just have to keep alternating. But really, it won't be that difficult. As an example, if I just had one edge left, sometimes I'll even just insert it and then rotate to the top, even if I didn't see anything that it can pair with. Usually you will, but if you don't, I feel like that's just better for this level because you don't have to rotate there again. So my next tip kind of alternates between person to person. So if you are sub 16, then you probably started using look ahead and it might be hard to look ahead to all this. So for that level, I think you should just focus on turning really, really fast. So like, ah, uh, turn quick. If you're having trouble looking ahead, then you just turn as fast as possible. If you are confidently turning really fast and you feel like you're not really thinking you just kind of look at a piece and you're like oh i know how to do that so you just need to make sure that if you can look ahead then you should and if you can't then just turn fast until it is muscle memory so this once you see this you should just do this right away pair it it's all muscle memory and then you should be looking ahead to other pieces in the queue so that's it if this video helped you please like and sub and also bye